Let's go to our uh, second candidate of the morning, David Russ, and he is one of the five running for position one, Yam Hill County Commission. Uh, you go by David or Dave? I introduce myself as David, and people usually do what they do. Okay. Well, David, <laughs> welcome to KOYC's Microphones. You're running for position one, Yam Hill County Commission. Why? Well, I chose to run for Yam Hill County Commissioner because I saw a need in Yam Hill County that I felt that I was specifically uh, experienced to fulfill. We have some growth coming at us here um, from more dense areas in Portland, and they'll be coming out this way. Where I grew up, I saw that kind of growth happen and in a more agricultural area. Different cities making various decisions from it'll never happen here to we won't let it happen here or we'll take on this giant corporation that's going to serve our needs forever. There's issues with all those decisions. There's more mediary decisions that we can make and I've seen some of those things and not that I say I know exactly what's right for Yamhill County because I want to hear what the people have to say but as they say we think we should do this I can say well if you go down that road these are the speed bumps on it that kind of thing or you go this way this is a speed limit you'll hit so I want to be there to help direct the county and, and help the growth happen in ways that are the most prosperous and enjoyable for the people that are here now and maintain the beauty we have that's Yamhill County. What area was it that you come that you saw those incidents? Um, Los Angeles. You saw miles and miles of strawberry fields, orchards, cow pastures turn into solid houses. Um, in some cases, like I said, the, those so many houses that you couldn't even find gas for miles and miles and those people need some gas. So there are little things like that you need to think about as you grow a city that make sure that you place things in certain areas that separate different businesses and different neighborhoods so you don't cause blight you don't cause people to not want those houses and have them devalued because there's no commerce commerce near them it's the things like that if you had uh, were asked what are the top three challenges of uh, facing Yamhill County in the future what would those be well I have top three things I'm kinda working with that I believe this is my priorities I, I see so many things in government as interactive and you need to consider all those as you go. The thing I mentioned first was growth management. As that comes at us, we have to make sure that it's not just going the way that the people coming at us want, but what we want and the way that it best is profitable for us in the future and creates stability for our agricultural base and, and maintains the beauty that we have. And so that growth management has to do with economic development, land use issues, and you know even various smaller things, ordinances of science and things like that. The next thing is budget management. And the way I look at that is we need to bring more business into the way government's done. I've got experience in continuous improvement, quality management, Kaizen, that kind of thing, and I'd like to see more of that in government. As growth comes at us, any businessman knows that growth causes a stress in your systems and a stress in your budgets. And the best way to guard against that is to improve your systems as that happens or before it happens. So you're leaning out your expenses and you're making things happen better and faster. And that way, as the growth happens and your budget gets tight, you can worm your way through that without as much stress. Finally, being kind of a small county or having you know 80% of our cities in this county be small, we need to bolster them to bring up the whole. You know, any chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so I want to work more to develop a synergy between the, all the cities and the county to help with economic development for the whole so that when we take actions or, or we encourage businesses to come here, we can take the strongest points of every area of our county and direct them toward that and help to bolster the, the different small cities and things. You know, as, as a city councilor of Dundee, which is one of our small towns, the, I, I know the stresses that the small towns go through. You now, we, we can't necessarily, you know, bring each one of them up, but if they all come to the table and we all talk, we may find ways that those small towns can serve the future better than some of the larger towns and bring all of us up together at one time. Let's talk about uh, a couple of the hot-button issues likely to face uh, Yamhill County and other counties in Oregon and across the nation. Medical marijuana dispensaries first, and then Second Amendment um, gun rights. Uh, what are we doing that particular issue? Of course, you heard us talking earlier this morning about there was another shooting in the FedEx facility. 
Um, and it just keeps coming up every day. Let's talk about medical marijuana dispensaries. Your position, how you feel it's been rolled out, and how Yamhill County is going to respond and should. Well, medical marijuana has been a question in Oregon for, was it eight or nine years since it first came out? My concern is that until now, the medical marijuana laws and situation in Oregon have supported the underground. When you create a medical marijuana availability, the card for these people to have it, but you don't create a place for them to go to get it, they're going to go on the streets and get it and expose themselves to dangers. Not only that, but build up the whatever cartels that are distributing those drugs. So it's, it's a support for the underground. I see creating dispensaries as an opportunity to shut down that underground. Now, to say that the law is perfect as it is, no, it's not. And there's almost no law that ever comes out perfect as is. And that's another reason why you know, I look at Kaizen for all things I approach in government. Government doesn't instantly come up and have things happen perfectly. The way to do it is plan at small steps. And that's where we're at now. I believe that our state legislature has been beat with this for the last nine years, that being told by both sides what the good and the bad and the ugly is, and they came to the best conclusions they could that would support the people with the need and the people that are completely against that need and, and appease both sides as best possible with, with laws that they felt would serve the people, protect the people, and give the opportunity for this. And at this point, it's about the most regulated industry in our state. And, you know, it's not for everybody to have, you know, places with marijuana dispensaries. And all marijuana dispensaries are not created equal. Like any business, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, <laughs> and even some a cream of the crop. But so, you know, it's an interesting thing that I have kind of liked to step away from a little bit at this point because my outlook on government and the way that I approach leading government is what's the return on investment for things for us, for our kids in the future. And so I look like what's what's the trend happening with medical marijuana or marijuana as a whole in this country? And for us to overwork this at this point seems like kind of a, a lot of wasted effort, especially when, you know, in the next year, there's probably going to be another full legalization measure in November and state legislature has already stated they're going to be reworking and rehashing all these laws in the next year. You know, all these cities, including Dundee, who have come up with the uh, moratorium are thinking they're going to create some new legislation. Well, the truth is, is when the state legislature gets done, those legislations may be ruled out that you can't have them <laughs> or things may be completely legal and they're out of the question. So it seems like wasted effort, and that's what I'm kind of against, is a lot of wasted effort in government. So what should we do now? Is the moratorium the right, right thing to do for now? Well, for now, um, I still question the, the rightness of, of the moratoriums. Like I said, it does give us a chance to not have it in certain areas or something. That's something else I was concerned about. Is, is this creating a moratorium? First of all, is an emergency legislation, which I tend not to support. There's been lots of complaints people have told me about our state legislature doing emergency legisl legislations and bypassing the, the true legislative process. Um, and um, also that it's like saying, we want to pass this law that says it's going to give us opportunity to pass some laws that we don't even know what they are. And that doesn't sound like a plan to me. It sounds like maybe there's some other... Um, motive. And I want to make sure that in government we state our motives. If our motive is to say we don't want dispensaries, let's say that right out, let's pass a law that says that rather than, oh, we're going to put a moratorium on it so that we can create some laws that appear to control it but actually say no. So there have been a number of candidates that have come here on the morning show and talked about they would prefer to see medical marijuana dispense in pharmacies. It's control. That's where all their other prescription drugs are are given to patients why are we creating a special business to only dispense medical marijuana if it's a regulated drug why not do it in the dispensary would you prefer to see it handled in a pharmacy setting or are the medical marijuana dispensaries a way you would like to go forward oh no pharmacies all the way the problem is is that's a federally regulated situation and therefore we can't do it 
the federal government just prohibits it from being in there. That, if if it was possible, I would be you know the number one sign holder. Let's get this stuff in the farming seas and have it fully controlled. The Second Amendment gun rights. Uh, there was six wounded in a FedEx shooting today in Georgia. It seems like uh, every day we get up, there was some place else with with a uh, shooting. It's a sad state of affairs in society. Uh, I've already said what my position is on Second Amendment. Uh, the right to keep and bear arms guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution presently. What's your position on that? I definitely support the Constitution in, in not only this way, but always. That we have the right to you know, uh, keep and bear arms. You know, I've, I've often had the conversation with people that, you know, when that law was, cre when that was created in the Constitution, that the citizens could actually have any arm that the government had. I don't know that I fully support that right now, but it's still that's the intent of that constitutional amendment or the original constitution. Um, and like Tim Casey said, it's not the guns that's out there, it's the people. And it's the same thing with anything else when you add a human factor. You know, there's people that say marijuana is, you know, take, go back to that, is a gateway thing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the way your parents treated you could be a gateway to drugs. It depends on who you are, who they were, your, your whole society around you, your psyche. And the same thing applies back to guns, bring it back around. It's your, your ability to control yourself and such that you're going to do whatever you do as a human being that you feel right or don't feel right or want to attack or don't attack. If you, wanna, if you can't get a gun, you're going to find some other way if you really have this intention to go out and hurt people. If uh, the sheriff... If there is a change in policy in the administration level, let's say it's still in the U.S. Constitution, Second Amendment is still there, but administration in the federal government makes the decision that they want to disarm the citizens. All of the candidates for sheriff are saying they will not be a party to the federal government disarming citizens of Yamhill County. If that scenario happens and the sheriff takes a position, I'm not going to support or help the federal government take guns away from our citizens, what would your, be your position? I would stand behind them on that. Stand behind the sheriff? Sheriff, absolutely, okay. yes. It's, and the people of Yamhill County. It's majority of the people I've talked to in Yamhill County are, tell me they, they've got their guns and they want to keep them. And they believe they have a right to, and so do I. You've mentioned the term Kaizen a couple times in the interview. What is that? Kaizen is it developed out of quality management, continuous improvement. And it's the theory that if you have a goal... The, the most efficient way to get there with the strongest result is by taking small steps. And I see government as being that way. And that's the way it usually happens, but people don't always expect it to happen. People want sometimes big results from government, and they'll set a big, lofty, far-off goal. And the problem with that is, is that as you start trying to take that through the law-making process and such, people start knocking it off course and knocking it off course, and, you know, it's kind of like if, if you set sail to go to Japan and you're two degrees off, you're going to end up in China. But if you set sail just to go to a small island off the coast and you're two degrees off, you're going to hit that island. And so that's the kind of thing with, with Kaizen and Small Steps. And I believe we should set goals that, that are quick and easy to reach that can't be knocked too far off a of course and then have more goals in mind to step forward and, and reach the final result. Now, one example that I, I like to give is the uh, Dundee Bypass. Right now, people are complaining because of the fish hook at south end of Dundee, and I, I'm not for the way that that's configured, but I am for the bypass. This thing's been 30 years in the making. If we had waited to get the perfect bypass, we would not be under construction right now. My goal is to get it built as is, and then go back and start kicking the state again. Let's do the next step. Let's make it better. And that's the way that we need to approach correction of things in government so that we don't, we not only get too far off course, but we don't expend too much time on effort that ends up being a failure. So your, your position would be that you favor the construction of the bypass now, even though the Fisher question is still out there. Oh, absolutely. The, like I said, we, we've got to start it. It's the most important thing. And, and in anything, if you want correction of some issue in government, you've got to get started. And like I said, setting that lofty, far-off goal is just going to knock you way off course. We need to get the bite-sized things and use the money. You know, like the, the mayor of Dundee recently said to me, 
that if we hadn't done this right now, that money would be somewhere else and we would be pushed so far out again because they, they spent the money that we had for the bypass and we wouldn't be getting anywhere. Speaking of budgets, and the reason what we're trying to do is ask similar questions of all the candidates, and we're asking this quest next question not because we're uh, promoting uh, Yamhill County to cut back coverage of Polk County and, and uh, emergency response from the sheriff's office, but we want to give scenarios for the candidates to talk about so you have an idea about a little bit about what makes them tick and, and how they're making decisions and the rationale they used to make that decision. So with that in mind, the question is, Polk County only has enough money for deputies on the road 10 hours a day. Yamhill County deputies and other surrounding counties have to respond there for calls for service, emergency, you know, burglaries, auto accidents, so on and so forth, if there's not a Oregon State Trooper or a Polk County deputy available. The question that we have is, obviously, we want to help our neighbors. We want to help other citizens. But where do we draw the line, and do we draw the line, and making sure that Yamhill County is covered but not at the expense of trying to cover another county that can't support and pay for their own law enforcement? This is a really complex question. I understand that. <laughs> Especially because the, the underlying issue is humanity. Right. And, and that's, that's a question. We should help our neighbor. Um, but, you know, going back to... So, Another thing I've talked about that I want to have is the quality control and continuous improvement. Sometimes it sounds like I'm a broken record, but it's just me being on message about how valuable the things that I believe in that I'm bringing to the county can be. Through quality management, continuous improvement, you again, you lean out your systems. We lean out our systems. We will have some extra money in the budget so that we won't be so strained when we go out and, and do this humanitarian effort to help out Polk County. Also, as a county commissioner, I would make sure that I'm trying to stay in contact with the other counties surrounding Polk uh, to find out that they're putting in effort, that it's not going to be so much just on us, that we're sharing in our help of these people. Finally, I would like to request that the sheriff say, what, is, what do you think your expendable budget is to put into that before it actually starts affecting our citizens, because that's who we really have a responsibility to. And no matter how humanitarian we want to be and go out and help people, I can't justify anything shortchanging our citizens. And so I would want the, the sheriff to basically set up kind of a budget item for that and try to stick to it and at, at some point have conversations with Polk about, you know, we may have to limit our time frames or, or the amount of response that we can give or that we need backup from these other counties when we go in to try and maintain that budget. Let's talk about your experience. Let's talk about your work experience. You've been, uh, how long have you been a county commissioner in Dundee? Uh, city councilor. City councilor, sorry. Um, since February of 2013. Okay. What's your other life experiences and business experience? Well, I've, uh, I started working when I was 11 years old, <laughs> and I only worked you know, a couple hours a day after, after school, but it was you know, something I did, and I got out and worked for somebody outside of my family and, and got to build a work ethic. I started my own business at age 17 when uh, just you know, some landscaping stuff sure. and miscellaneous services. In fact, I, I called it David F. Russ Professional Services, and I just thought, I'll provide a professional service, whatever it is you need. <laughs> and then... Um, after I got out of college and did a few years of other work, I went and took over a property management company. At the property management company, I was managing 12 entities' balance sheets and financial statements and, and also the companies. And this was multi-million dollar residential, industrial, commercial complexes. So I got a lot of experience interacting with city councils, dealing with those places' issues and dealing with budgets and multiple budgets, multi multiple million dollar budgets that had you know somewhat of an interaction. After I left there, I, I went into manufacturing. I've worked as an executive in clothing manufacturing and sheet metal fabrication, a little bit of machining. So I have a lot of this experience of, of running a business, of dealing with budgets, being an executive, being on boards, and that's what the county commissioner is. They're the board of directors for the county. You know, as, as a corporation, you have your presidents, which would be our uh, various department heads, 
and then you have the board of directors which is above the president and in the county that's that's your county commissioners as a board of directors so i've got board experience as well um and then also with my experience at dundee city council i've added to that to uh be more familiar with the local small government at an in-depth level and going to the local county city dinners i got familiar with the different cities and i've interacted with them personally i've talked with all the mayors at these dinners and the city councils been out to the city councils back since you know talking to them and introducing myself as a candidate so we've got uh about let's say four minutes left to go in the show as they look at David Russ for Yamhill County Commissioner position one. They have five choices. Why, when they come to your name on the vote by mail ballot, should they mark or tick the box that says David Russ? Oh. Wow. Um, well, because I have this idea of bringing, like I said, business into government to lean out the systems, to make everything stronger, provide better services for Yamhill County. I recognize that Yamhill County is one of the top agricultural counties in the state, and I'd like to see it stay that way. That's something that helps maintain our beauty. I also have a lot of business background, and so I know how to deal with things with economic development and help businesses come in. I know what, what would attract these businesses. And also, I do have some experience in um, media and broadcasting which I'd like to bring into some of the concepts of the way we approach our economic development and things. When the county gets involved in economic development, the, you know, so many people like to say, you know, the county can't create jobs, and it really can't, but it can do things that do that have a synergy effect that bring jobs. So an example I like to use for that is the um, Precision Farming Expo. Mm -hmm. With that, we turn international attention to Yamhill County. And it's that kind of thing, trying to get find those niche things that will bring an international attention to the county and turn heads this way that will really boost our economic development. The county can step in and help out with those kind of things. And I have, like I said, I have this experience where I know how to utilize those things. In fact, I'm trying to use my media experience to run my campaign which is kind of a, a long hard road rather than putting out all these signs and being part of the plastic sign crop out there I'm looking to spread the word through my website davidfrust.com facebook.com slash Russ is for us it's my motto you know vote for Russ he's for us uh, that rather than again what's the ROI I'm putting a bunch of signs out and a bunch of plastic that's just gonna get thrown away I don't see that. I don't want to waste all bunch of people's money to get into office so that I can spend their money when I'm in office. Um, and it's interesting because as I tell people that, I don't want to be part of the plastic sign crop. Rather than ask me a question or say, oh, that's great, most of them, the first words out of their mouth is, thank you. For not spending the money on signs? Well, for not putting up all that clutter and, and, and a bunch of stuff to throw away. What are you hearing from people as you're out and about talking to folks about the county government, county commissioner, the race. What are they saying to you? You know, I, I went through the, the downtown areas of various cities and, and shook hands and talked to business owners and was asking them. And more of their concerns are with city issues than with county. And some of them had some, some concerns about county. And a lot of asked the questions that you've asked me today. And then, of course, a lot of them are saying, like, the questions, what's a county commissioner do? What's, what, what is that anyway? You know, the, I think the concerns for, for Yamhill County, one of the biggest things that I, it's more of an ambiance that I get in these conversations than what people directly say is they want to make sure that this place stays the beautiful place that we all move to. You know, I, I like to say, I didn't choose where to be born. I never would have chose L.A., I can tell you that. <laughs> but I did choose where to live, and I love this place. And that any amount of time that I've been here less than someone else doesn't make my love any less. I can tell you that for sure. How long have you been here in the local area? I've in been here for uh, for three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. What? Just playing the devil's advocate here, what would you say to the folks who say, well, you know, this guy is from California. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, and... <laughs> He's only been here for three years in place of somebody that's been here, you know, most of their life, if not their entire life. How do you handle that question as far as some people might say it's a little prejudicial? 
but that's some of the thought processes that goes on. I'm so happy you asked me that. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, it has been said, oh, well, if, if you're not from here, you can't possibly know what to do here. Or, or how could we you know, accept someone from that type of situation? Or you're from California. Well, whatever it may be. Well, I, I pro propose another question on that. That uh, if you were facing charges or something in court, would you uh, rather have a Harvard Law attorney represent you? Or someone who graduated from Willamette College. I'm not putting down Willamette College, but I'm just saying, <laughs> what experience do you want working for you? And so me and my experience with what I saw in L.A. and the, and the growth and, and also my family. My father was uh, in politics in the town where I grew up from the time I was about three till I was 12. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of involved in that and saw a lot of things happen besides seeing these different cities go through different things and where it ended up. So that experience, I believe, is very valuable to Yamhill County. People who have been here their whole life, they know that that farm's been sitting over there forever, and they want that farm to stay there, but they don't necessarily know what it takes to make it happen. So what you're saying is you don't want to turn Yamhill County into Los Angeles? Oh, absolutely not. Ugh. <laughs> You want to retain the rural, the, the character, the, the values, the, the aesthetics that we have currently, the, the, Absolutely. the quality of life. That's why I'm here. You know, it's because of the beauty of the place and, and what it is that we have such a phenomenal uh, ecology here and, and strong county that doesn't have all the stuff of the giant metropolis that's just over the hill, but we have the access to it right there, and it's nice. They can, they can have it and keep it over there. I don't really, having lived through that stuff once, I don't want to do that again. What's the Facebook page, website? You've mentioned it a couple times. So go ahead and mention it again. Okay, yes. My website is davidfrust.com, and the Facebook page is facebook.com slash russ is for us. All righty. David Russ, is there anything you want to add in closing? Um, I'd appreciate your vote. I believe a vote for me is a vote for Yamhill County uh, to protect the future for us, for our children, and their children. All righty. David, thank you for being with us on the show today. I know you're probably busy, and, and uh, thanks for coming in and sharing with the folks where you are on the issues. Thank you, David. It's been great being here, and I really appreciate you doing this. This is probably the best venue for people to get information about the candidates of this race. Well, thank you very much. If you want to hear it again, you can go to our website, klyc.us, and uh, news, recent interviews. There's a place where you can click on and hear the candidates individually, or go to KLYC News Channel, and all of the candidates are running in a loop feed, and you can just sit and listen to them. Remember, each interview is a half hour long, so uh, pour a cup of coffee and get ready to listen for a while. We do want to remind you that coming up uh, would be tomorrow, the 30th. We do not have a candidate uh, scheduled, but on May 1st, we have uh, at 7.30 in the morning, uh, we have Deborah Bridges are going to be in here uh, talking about uh, County Commissioner Race Position 3 and Brett Veach. Now, we rescheduled Brett. Uh, to May 1st, which is um, Thursday, because tomorrow we're going to be in Willamina, Willamina Wednesday. Uh, one of the things that we want to do as a radio station is is reach out to the smaller cities in the county. Uh, we love McMinnville. McMinnville's great. UFO Festival, uh, Turkey Rama, everything. We love it. This is a, where we're the station has its license, but we also serve Yamhill County, and so we want to spend time going out into the other cities in the county and so Wednesday is the day we go to Willamina Sheridan. We'll be talking more about uh, Wallace Bridge tomorrow. But so Willamina Wednesday is tomorrow, and that's why we don't have a candidate scheduled for that. We can focus more on the Willamina Sheridan area. David, thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you again. I'd also like to say that when you get a cup of coffee going and I'm commissioner, I definitely want to be here and make sure we keep people up to date with the issues so that they can give me great feedback to be the best commissioner they could have. Okay. And again, the reason why we uh, dis, uh, put a cup of coffee on the shelf for a little bit is so we can take care of some infrastructure, some work we're still working on at the radio station, uh, but we will bring the program back on a, on a regular basis so we can get county commissioners, city school board members in here and talk about some of the issues. It's kind of interesting in that we've had both parties. We've had people say, don't turn it into a talk radio station and just play music, and then we've had people say, put more local news and information on there. So we're trying to cut a balance between the two. 
uh, but it's important, and we want to do it in a morning show on a regular basis, probably not every morning, but on a regular basis, to talk about issues in the county and the various cities. So we will be doing that. David, thanks for being with us.